keeping the dream alive, like keeping, uh, keep going and never give up. Yeah, I think aspiring to me means reaching for something way above the ordinary, but going for extraordinary um, in every part of your life. That would be the hope, yeah. When it got tough, when it looked like it wasn't gonna happen, how did you keep going? <laughs> That's a great question. So we just kept going, really, honestly, and we kept creating and creating, and then we got to work with the top you know, celebrities from Michelle Pfeiffer to Mark Ruffalo, and then we just um, kept going. And then um, won, now we've won over 100 awards, and we're just playing all over the world. And um, Yeah, the only way to win is to keep going yeah. and to celebrate the wins you do have in teamwork. I think the teamwork has always been the strength for us, you know, like, having someone to put your shoulder on when things get hard and, you know, hopefully get out of it together. <laughs> at the Aspire Magazine launch, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling amazing. Let me tell you something. We are here at the Godfrey Hotel, which is one of my favorite spots in Hollywood. And this rooftop is one of a kind, which I admire the most. And, and, and yeah, I'm just feeling fantastic. Well, and you're looking great. So tell us about this shirt you have on. Thank you so much. This is one of the designers, a fashion activist. That's one of the things that I love to do the most to represent designers. So this is Cross for God. It's an amazing designer from Taiwan. And the sequence are going, the messages are going, pray for you. And I'm very happy to be able to bring it on forward for everyone, for every one of you to see it. Fashion Week's coming up. Are you excited? Very much excited. We have some very good things going on. We're going to have some designers walking down the runway uh, with our friends at the Newmar building in downtown. And also uh, the, uh, with iHeart Fashion. So get ready. It's going to be really, really good. So I'm very excited. Don't miss it. And where can we find you on social media? You can find me at Aaron Gomez P. Um, on Instagram. And you can find my company at agphollywood.com. It's amazing. Well, have fun tonight. Nice seeing you. Thank you, guys, and enjoy. This show's going to be so much fun tonight. I was always aspiring, um, and I really kind of didn't aspire to do much of anything else. And then in the subsequent years, I've become an author and a producer and a director, and that's all wonderful. But I aspire to be inspiring. That is, that's my job. My job is to make everyone else's job easier and, and therefore to be inspiring. My job is to be a dream to work with and therefore to be inspiring. So that is what I aspire to. Have I overcome challenges? You bet. Um, <clears throat> the biggest one is learning to love the word no because in my life, in this industry, in this business, I have heard it so many times you'd think, I was, you'd think it was my boyfriend. It's my lover. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. But I aspire to be inspiring. Actually, I feel it went very successful, don't you? I felt it was uh, quality is better than quantity, right? And I think we had a quality amount of people. You know, we had the celebs flying around. We have Grammy winners. We have models. We have everyday people. And then you have me. <laughs> and then we're, you and me, right? Right, regular people. So, yeah, everything's going wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'm great, very grateful for everybody being here. Everybody's done a wonderful job. My publicist, I'm very thankful for Nicole. She did an amazing job. Everyone's just great. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy. Can't beat it. Thank you. Okay, I'm here with the wonderful Dee Dee Sorvino and John Schneider. How are you guys, and can I ask you both, what does the word aspiring mean to you in terms of your life and your career? Ah, you go first. Well, I'm excited to be representing Aspire uh, skincare line. So when I think of aspiring, I'm thinking of the skincare line because everyone should be beautiful, everyone should look their best, and I think that aspires you to uh, be a better person and have a better life. Oh, that's great. Aspiring to me means you have a dream. So you're aspiring to be something. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of folks out there who don't believe they deserve to have a dream. And we all deserve to have a dream. So uh, I've been aspiring to do better. I've been aspiring to do better music, to do better movies, to be a better person, to be a better grandpa. And uh, I think aspiring is something that you should plan on doing for the rest of your life. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think the word speaks it for itself. And when they approached me, I said, I want to make it sure that it's shot in nature, that it has a specific message because a picture speaks louder than words, right? So are you still doing your comedy as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. I do comedy. I mean, movies, we kind of, you know, have to wait a little bit when SAG negotiates things. But stand-up comedy is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful platform. Just came back from New York during Fashion Week. We did a show, you know, Models of Comedy. And going to do one here next month and then hopefully go to Vegas next year with Aspire magazine, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. And writing books. You know, released one book at Barnes and Noble, so that was very exciting. Model Mom and working on d giving other people also platforms and creating this big community because I think it's very important to give back. Oh, absolutely! And um, love your dress as well. You look thank beautiful. You. Di Fiore, thank you so much for dressing me tonight, and really excited to bring fashion to this. So, where can people find you on social media? Uh, they can find me on Instagram, Eugenia Cosmina. I am just started doing Bigo Live. It's a live streaming app, you know, that does like live stream shows. Uh, there's so many new things. I don't use TikTok yet, but maybe one day. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we'll find you on there, and it's so great, and have fun tonight. Thank you so much. And congratulations for being on the cover of Aspiring Magazine. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Thank you. Aspiring is like everything, you know, to our to our life. Uh, you know, I like to, uh, like me, I, you know, fashion inspired me to be a better person, to be, a, you know, like a, uh, to finish, uh, accomplish my dream as a fashion designer from a housewife. So I just want to use fashion to inspire, inspire other people to uh, pursue their dream. So aspiring is like uh, just uh, full of hope, full of uh, creativity, full of opportunities, full of future. So I think it's good. Now, can I ask you what inspires your designs? Everything. Honestly, even you, you tell me a word today, say anything. Okay, that's going to be a collection tomorrow. <laughs> Anything. Basically, I think uh, I have the, you know, I think the foundation for our creativity is uh, freedom. So if you l keep freedom, like you keep your mind free, you can basically do everything, anything. So it's like for design, it's the same way. So I just keep my f mind free. So I just get inspired for any like flowers from any scenes from the movie from one word from my friend that's all you know so it's like uh, I I'm excited every day because I you know wake up to the uh, opportunities like uh, magic every day so it's great my philosophy I just want to design for people I want like a few people and I want to design something to touch people to inspire people so I think fashion should go to eventually to kind of united with people thank you very much yeah these girls they are like uh, some, some they, they, they are lot, like dreamers some of them they only like practice like one year some of them they only started but I just feel like fashion bring everybody together I want to kind of create opportunity for all the dreamers so it's like yeah fashion equals dream so I'm I'm happy I'm doing something to help you know, people uh, pursue dreams. Larry Namer, uh, what does the word aspiring mean to you? Now, you're someone who aspired and you founded ETV. It's massive, it's huge, it was innovative, it's, uh, it's all, all the superlatives. Tell me about your thoughts. Well, you know, I think aspire is this desire to reach the next level, you know. And um, for me, when I grew up in, I grew up basically in the hood in New York and I always aspired to get out of the hood, so. That's kind of what it is. How did you over, overcome some of the challenges that you faced on the road? Um, a lot of people say it's stupidity. You know, I wasn't smart enough to know you can't do stuff, so I just kept going and and did it and stuff. I mean, you know, starting a TV network, people don't wake up in the morning and start TV networks and stuff like that. But I wasn't smart enough to know that, so I just kept doing it. Did you have an all-time favorite show that ran on the network? I uh, talk soup. Yeah, Talk Soup was it. Greg Kinnear started it. What's your opinion now on new media, like social media, everyone watching so much stuff on their phone? <clears throat> well, I, I mean, I do a lot of stuff in China. I have a big company in China, and we do TV, film, and all kinds of other stuff. And actually, 70% of the people who watch my stuff in China watch it on a cell phone. So we've had to change how we do production and, you know, how we shoot stuff and stuff. I'm a, I'm a big technology fan and stuff. I'm totally into crypto and NFTs and blockchain and all of that kind of stuff. So 
Fantastic. Are there any big projects in particular that you'd like to talk about that are upcoming? Well, I'm doing, um, I'm, I just finished developing a late night talk show uh, called Natasha After Dark, which I hope gets on late night. Um, of course, there are no women in late night in case nobody's noticed that. I have. Um, and I'm doing an award show in um, Las Vegas in January if all the strikes are over, hopefully, uh, called the Nifty Awards, which is basically the Oscars of the metaverse. Great. Well, uh, if people want to watch or see on their phones or elsewhere, where can they go? Well, I mean, you can just check out my website, ljnmedia.com, and most of my stuff is all listed there. So, Fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, how are you? Sandra Santiago. Yes, Sandra Santiago. I'm here enjoying the beautiful weather in Hollywood, yes. <laughs> it's nice. We're getting a, a late summer, right? Yes, look at, look at this weather. My goodness, it's beautiful tonight, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, what does the word aspiring mean to you and your life and your career? It's not giving up, you know? It's uh, looking up for others that, you know, to do what you love and keep doing what you love, aspiring to be the best you can in your life. Yeah, that's what aspired me to me. So during those rough moments on the road to stardom and success, how did you keep going? How did you overcome the challenges? Um, to see the purpose, why you're an artist, right? We know, you know, if you want to give light to others, I think all the artists, that's what the main goal is, is to give light and to entertain, to make people happy or, you know, take them to in a roller coaster of emotions. And I think the artists have lived society. So I think if you are an artist, you have to find your purpose. And if you have tough um, um, situation, you have a tough situation that you're going through, just remember that. The purpose. <laughs> That's beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, we got to talk about the dress. Yes. Tell us. Yes, you know, I'm wearing Kiki Wong today. You know, she's like the queen of this event. And of course, I wanted to bring flowers. You know, I want to give myself flowers, red flowers. So I wore this uh, red, beautiful red flower dress. Yes. Super honored to be involved in Aspiring Magazine. Um, it feels great to feel like somehow I'm aspirational. So I consider it such a compliment and I'm excited to be here to celebrate all the women in the issue and especially our cover girl. I think you are aspirational. So um, love your outfit tonight as well. And um, so tell us what does uh, to be aspirational to people mean to you? Well, I think for my case, being aspirational is because I went through a lot in the public eye with abuse and I speak out about domestic violence. I advocate for victims, women and children of domestic violence and raise a lot of money for shelters and just try to take my own experience and turn it into something positive. I feel like, as you probably know, my husband committed suicide, my abuser, and um, unfortunately, suicide with an abuser involved, um, very often it's murder-suicide, and so I feel as though I was left here by the grace of God and my daughter. So that's why I tell my story. No, and it's a lot to share, and but it's so needed and so wonderful for you to share. Yeah, and it's it's been. Um, heartbreaking and heartfelt because I have so many women approach me on a daily basis to tell me that they're also in one or have been in a domestic violence situation and I feel as though the numbers are way underreported just based on how many people share their stories with me so I also speak at colleges um, I love to speak to freshmen and sophomores to talk about relationship inequality date rape red flags things to look for when you're away from your parents for the first time so as a having a mother as being a mother of a 17 year old who's going to be going to college soon I hope some of those things are going to be ingrained in her oh and I'm sure they will <laughs> well we thank you for everything you do any projects that you'd like to talk about I'm actually super excited to see Eric Roberts tonight because I just finished my first movie Guardians before the strike and he's the lead and so I play a doctor in Guardians and we're halfway through Masterpiece which is a thriller and then as soon as the strike is over hopefully we can resume so a little bit of scripted and a little bit of non-scripted I'm mixing it up Great. Thank you for asking. Well, have fun tonight. And where can we find you on social media? At Taylor Armstrong. Instagram, Twitter. It's just me. <laughs> I'm stuck with just my name. Good name. Thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you so much. Take care. Tony, uh, obviously, we heard on the red carpet about your movie. Um, so what inspired you to do the movie? 
I, well, it, was, it just happened. <laughs> I was training this guy named Eric, Eric the trainer. He was a trainer to the stars in LA. We know what happened. And uh, he brought a friend in one day and he says, hey, you know, I know this production company may want to take a, I wrote my book, my memoir about my life. And so they read the book and they said, this is a really good book. We wanted to make a movie out of it. So I was in shock. <laughs> I didn't dream that, you know, writing the book, yes. Winning titles, yes. But a documentary, no. Well, and what I love about it is you were one of the first few, right? I mean, at that Muscle Beach time, and it was like, it was kind of a revolutionary at the time, correct? Absolutely. 1976, it was just old school, hardcore, out in the hot heat, squatting in the heat and everything. So, yeah, it was brand new. I just arrived to L.A., and I couldn't wait to get to Muscle Beach. And I lived there every day. I was working out. And, and Arnold says, I've been watching you for a couple of months, he said. I've been watching you. And you train really hard, you're very intense, and you have a lot of potential. I, th I think he saw the desire in me. I was a skinny kid, but I had a lot of push and a lot of heart. So I think that's what motivated him is to say something. I mean, who, who else gets discovered by Arnold Schwarzenegger? I love that story, and I love everything you've done. And it's, it's, it's a lot of, I don't think people know how hard it is, you know? Like the discipline you need and everything you need. And, and I'm really glad that they're telling your story. And uh, do you have any words of inspiration for health and wellness that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, I just think everybody should find their passion, you know? Any sport, like dancing or singing or ballet, or whatever you want to do, just find passion that, that drives you, that moves you. And, be, and, think, and take care of yourself, you know? Be positive. Don't listen to naysayers. Focus on you. Believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe, no one's going to believe. And just be determined. You never quit because when you quit, you lost. What's so great is we're here at this Aspire magazine, which is what that's all about. So it's a great time to be at this Aspire magazine launch. And um, it's a great time to talk to you. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, Tony Pearson 87 at IG and the Michael, Jackson, the Michael Jackson bodybuilding on Facebook. Okay, I'm here with both the, the subject of Driven, the Tony Pearson story, and the director. Uh, how did you two come together to tell this incredible story? Well, I was working out at the gym, and a good friend of mine, was, I was training him, and his friend came into the gym and said, Hey, uh, I know someone who owned a production company, because I wrote my, my life story, a book. And so they read the book, and they decided they wanted to do a movie out of it. Yeah, it's truly incredible. You have to read the book, Driven, My Secret Untold Story. Um, that really was the basis for the documentary itself and really the reason why we began this whole journey. Um, also, especially that Tony was 63 at the time when he took the stage one last time uh, before he... Uh, I won Mr. Universe. Before he retired, really. That's my, yeah, retiring. I live in Las Vegas, and that's my last show. And I said, that's it, I'm done. At 63 years old. So, and they decided to say, hey, we want to, we want to do this story. It's a true life story. Uh, I'm from the Deep South, and I, the adversity I went through, and how I survived, and I was discovered by Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, it, it, you know, it's a long journey. I've been bodybuilding for 50 years now. What was it like to take the stage one more time at age 63? Very, very challenging because <laughs> my body was shutting down. You know, I, couldn't, I, I, I trained for 17 weeks twice a day, and I never missed a day. But it took a lot, took a toll on my body, and I said, this is the last show. I'm going to retire after this. And I wanted to retire in Las Vegas. That's where I live. So the show was at my hometown, so why not? Yeah, and we go over that in the documentary, everything that Tony went through to prepare for his final uh, competition. And it's really intense, you know. It's very intense when a bodybuilder has to get uh, into competition shape, but it's even more intense when you have to do it at 63, when your body is different than when you were younger. What would you like people to walk away from this film thinking and feeling? Oh, it's a lot of emotions that I wrote about my life growing up in the Deep South, the civil rights and without a mom, without a dad. Um, you know, just um, it was very poor. There's a lot of things you can take away from because I think people can relate to a lot of the things that I wrote about. It's not about bodybuilding, but, it, but how you survive, to become a survivor. Uh, believe in yourself, you know, have the fight to live. And I was, every day I was struggling for, to, to live. So that's, that's, that's the message, if you could just find a passion in your life, something you enjoy doing that makes you happy. 
Yeah, it's truly a motivational and really powerful story. So, you know, when you finish the documentary, you have seen something of yourself in Tony. No matter whether you're athletic, you know anything about the sport, you will see yourself in Tony in some form, in some way, and you're gonna be motivated to keep on going, keep on pushing through whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with. I love that. When and where will it be available? So it's gonna be available Friday, October 6th, anywhere you get your movies, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Voodoo, wherever you get your digital movies, it's gonna be there for you to download and view and get motivated. It, you know, it won Best Documentary back in November, no, February. February, yes. that's right. Yeah. Well, listen, it gives us all a lot to look forward to, and I wish you a lot of luck with the story. It sounds very inspiring. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And aspiring, too. Thank you. Thank you for having us. You look so good today. So Thank you. And I'm so happy if everyone looks. CoverGirl Eugenia over there. I'm super happy for her. Congratulations to her on Aspiring Magazine as the cover girl. I love that. Yeah, and what a great night here with the Aspiring Magazine people. It's just great, right? It is really special. Uh, I remember one of my first covers for Men's Health. I won't tell you the year, but it was so great to be on the cover of Men's Health uh, in Latin America and in the U.S. in Espanol for Rodel Press. And it's just something special about creating the cover that thousands and thousands of people see in many different places so yeah oh that is wonderful so um it's kind of hard are there any independent projects you can talk about right now yes i can <laughs> the independent projects that i can talk about i'm so excited about is um the genius of johnny versace alive which is the movie i directed about johnny versace and how he inspired um, so many people, not just musicians, to use his fashion to, to express themselves like Madonna, um, Princess Diana, Bon Jovi, Elton John, but also the models he touched and the, and the great uh, films that he touched. So The Genius of Johnny Versace Alive, I hope everyone will enjoy watching it. It's going to be able to be downloaded uh, in the next months ahead. And it is independent, Five Arts Films in studios. I'm an independent producer and I have an independent film company. We love that. So where can people find you on social media? So they can find me uh, Vincent DePaul 12 on Instagram and Vincent DePaul 21 on Twitter, which is now called X. 